Oh, hello there, and welcome to the Unicorn Circuit, your weekly dose of car news, thanking weird shit off the internet, and strange foods, and some stories from my man, my main doodle here. How are you, mate? I'm good. How's your car going? Which one? Oh, any of them, all of them. All broken except for my favourite one. Oh, really? Which, which one's your favourite one? Supergrams. Oh, really? Yeah. Awesome. That's the best car, man. Although, yesterday, you know how many Ks I got out of my tank? Oh, uh, you're running on ethanol, so yeah. 180, 220? 239 Ks. Wow. And I thought, wow, I remember doing this fairly recently, and I looked up in my little, like, mileage tracker thing. Yeah. Yeah, it was like a week ago. Were they an enjoyable 239 Oh, dude, every, that's though. the thing. That's the key, isn't it? It is. Every single kilometre is enjoyable. It sounds good. It's so nice to drive. It's all set up mad. It's all big and whooshy and big, talky engine. Like Wouldn't anything else, quality, thing. quantity, you get less of it, but what you are getting is better. Oh, man. It's, it? it's like... It's like super concentrated tomato sauce. Right. Because if you get like just runny tomato sauce and spray it all over a meat pie and it's all just a big mess, if you know when tomato sauce is really nice and thick and like fresh and awesome, yes. that's super grams. Yes. Uh, Martin, speaking of tomato sauce, I'm so glad you segued into that because a couple of weeks ago we were telling the people about how you and I were not sure about whether you should either um, put your sauce in the cupboard or whether you should put it in the fridge. Uh, and we rang the manufacturer to find out and they had said you can do either. You can do either. And we forgot to tell you on the day, you can, they said both is possible, probably because there's so much preservatives and so much crap in it. Speaking of which, two minute noodles are bad. Are they? Sneeze of the week. Yeah man, never eat them again. Really? Yeah. I haven't eaten them for years. Um, uh, I'm not going to name any names, Martin. Sure. But. Um, those little sachets that you get of the noodles, yeah. that's like your whole daily intake of sodium and salt, basically. There's, there's, there's as much salt and crap in them, um, apparently according to some source that I can't remember, check the legal disclaimer, this Probably is from the we don't know. Um, that's the equivalent kind of crap as like, I think two and a half Big Macs. There you go. Like, but isn't it funny bad. how different ingredients in foods become villains at different times depending on who's got a wheelbarrow Absolutely, push? man. But, I mean, it, it, it was sugar. No, no, it, it was, was salt, sugar, it was, it was fat, man. The war oh, yeah, Fat. Fat. More on fat. Just yeah. pump sugar into it until it tastes good again. Yeah, and now it's the war. We're getting crazy. Let's. This is a car show, so so let's get back to cars. Now, before we like hook into the news, Martin, I have something that I want to share. Now, as you know, when I was a kid and I was young, lived on a farm, I didn't get a you bike. You rode a goat. I rode a goat, as you know. Yep. So I was, it was a fairly, I was going to say it's a deprived childhood, but in fact, it was incredible. So while I didn't get a bike and I rode a goat, I also got a Tonka caravan. Oh. And what I never got that everyone else got, Martin, was... Oh, what? A remote control car. And this is the car you gave me, Martin, like a good like a year or so ago. I haven't had time to build it, uh, but this is an S13, and because I own an S13 now, I thought on the show we could build this together That's for the next like idea. few episodes. Now, Martin, I've never owned or built a remote control car before, but from what I understand, you have. I have. I, I brought my old Of one. course you did. Here's something that you prepared earlier. Let's it check is. it out, man. So mine's Martin's a remote control car stash. Mine's a little bit more thrashed. Yours is a Subaru and mine's a Nissan. No, no, I, I got two shells. One's awesome, which is a peanut WRX. Yep. That one of the best looking Rexies other than the original one. They yep. all went downhill after it. And one is just... Oh, oh, wow. I don't even so know why shops. I own that. Bye. Good. Um, but what's cool about it is it's not a particularly fancy That's one. That's the only Porsche you'll ever own, isn't it, over yeah. there on the ground? It's not That's a particularly good. fancy one. Like, it's a, I think this is a TT01, and of people who are into this will know what that is. It's a really basic shell, but that's good because they're cheap and easy to build. Yep. Um, but it's got drift sleeves on the back of it. Oh, um, does it? Well, on all you, four. Oh, look at that one. And what's interesting is they drift, but they're, they're still four-wheel drive. Yeah, right. But it's, it skids like a demon, and it's got a, it's got a um, brushless motor in it, so it revs real high, it's got a lipo. It's all just eBay stuff, nothing particularly fancy. Yeah. Um, but that's really, that's a lot of fun. Now, Martin, before we actually get going on this and kick along, I think what people need to do for some inspiration, they need to show us their remote control cars on the Unicorn Circuit Facebook page. Yeah. And know? people that like cars generally like remote control cars. Do it. And that makes sense because they're fun and they're fast and they do skids. Awesome. And more skids uh, wait, how's it go? Uh, it's good skids. skids are better skids unless there's skids in your panties. That's right. Is that the word? Yeah. Is that how it goes? Now, I'm there you go, there's my Rex, look at that. Oh, it's a bit... That's awesome. It's, wow, it's, it's looks seen, of similar quality as my 180. It's seen better days. Um, so, man, I've never, I've never even seen one before, never attempted to build one, so you will share your knowledge, you'll so spray your knowledge on the, all of our faces. For the new people, this is a, so it's a remote control car kit, which is really cool, so you build it like a complete kit from scratch, it just comes with a bunch of parts and you stick it all together. I don't think you need glue for these either. Really? I'm pretty sure these just all sort of interference fit. I mean, I could be wrong, there might be bits that need glue. Um, but it all goes together and then 
they got things called hop-ups. Is this like this, this top-up parts? Yeah, look, tune-up parts, which aren't in the kit, so you can get aluminium motor mounts, steering arms, uprights, but you know what we have that I never had when I was building a yes, real car? real parts, so we could just throw that in the bin and go work on our real one. Because one of these is, like, we could just go to our garage and work on a real one, if you want. What I was going to say was, we have the ultimate, like, hop-up machine. What's a hop-up machine? 3D printer. Oh, 3D printer. You can make parts. Oh, 3D print some parts. That's a great idea, Martin. Which you could do. Let's have a look inside. Some people on YouTube call this unboxing. I find it the most unfathomably boring thing to view ever. Yet we always do um, it because yeah. the people like it. But 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 then sometimes oh, I find myself doing it. Look at that, Martin. <gasps> oh, a... what are they? Are they T37s? They're your wheels, man. Are they? I don't know. They kind of look a bit like T37s, don't they? So we've got that. We've got the shell. Wait on, that's not a shell. Wait on, what's Six that? Stroke. Oh, it is. We that cut is it a out, shell. Do we? You cut it out and then you paint the inside. Oh. And then it's got a. Um... And I've got my. Somewhere down. Oh, look, I've got my paint. We're going to do it black. Yeah, because it would match your Sylvia that got burnt by a storm. Yes. I couldn't find a 181. Anyway, so you paint the inside, which is cool. So you prep it, paint the inside, and then it's got a film on it. You peel it off and it goes all glossy. Oh, wow. So that's painted on the inside. Man, look at all. This is, this is a big build. It's a big build. It might and take us more than one heavy. episode. Okay, this is, see, I was just thinking, oh my goodness, this is epic, man. Yeah, it's cool, huh? Um, as we continue to go through this, um, because this is going to take a little while, uh, just as we get going, um, let's dive into uh, the Unicorn Circuit News of the Week. Martin, I want to kick off the news this week about, um, about the issue between this here and this. What's, what, what's the similarity between that and that? They are the same colour. What colour is that? Black. Meow meow. Okay. Bad. Black is bad. Black's the worst. The worst colour. The worst colour for cars. From a cleaning point of view, I think it no. is. No. What else, Martin? What Vis else can you visibility. think of? Visibility. What else? Um, bird poo. Yeah, it gets hot in summer. No, none of those things. If you've got a black car, you're paying more for insurance. What? That's it. Black cars and red cars are more likely to make a claim than any other colour. Oh, statistically, as in yes. they crash more. Well, I don't know if they crash more or they're this, stolen more, or if black and red are colours that are usually associated with like sporty cars, right? Like MX-5s, you can get black and red. Yeah. But some cars, like some models, you can't get black. I learned the other day you can't buy a white NB MX-5 in Australia. Really? You can't buy a white one. So that's why everyone's buying black and red, because there's only two cool colours. The other one's like bright green and aqua blue or red and black. Maybe if there's only red and black, maybe that's why red and black cars are making more like insurance We just price. figured out the insurance system for the entire country we just, just fixed now. It. MX-5's done, fixed. Fact is, statistically, red and black cars are more likely to make a claim, which means it's very likely that your insurance premiums will be more if you have a red or black car. I can't substantiate that with any uh, facts. Um, but I'm going to claim it's true. Check the disclaimer. Martin, mm. RX-7s? Yeah. RX-8s? Yeah. RX-9s? Huh? That's correct. RX-9. Rotary-powered Mazda successor for RX-7. They've actually gone rotary again. They've, they've gone rogue. And they've gone rotary. And Mazda has officially announced, or, or they've approved, they've formally approved, mm. um, the creation of an RX-9, which will be a rotary-powered coupe due out in 2020. Is it going to be hybrid? Uh, I don't think so. I don't rotary think so. plus hybrid. Is, is there a rotary hybrid? Does that exist yet? I don't think it exists yet. Never heard of such a thing. Yeah. I wonder if it's going to happen. Would you buy one? Man, rotaries. They're such funny, they're such funny things. I'm not going to get too depth, in depth into rotaries because I don't want to put people to sleep well, slash Illuminati excite confirmed, people too much. But, but like, you can do a seven and a half second quarter, six second quarter mile using a rotary with a million pounds of boost in it out of a, what is technically a 1.3 litre engine. 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 Or face balls. it can just explode and not work and use heaps of fuel and be rubbish and have no torque. Like, how do they do the two extremes? Well, one of the funny things about like RX-7s is everybody who doesn't own them says they're a pain in the ass to work on. But I don't know if they're saying that because their mate told them or if they've actually worked on one. But if they don't own one and they're not a mechanic, I don't know why they would have worked on one. I think like anything, you've just got to experience it to understand it. I drove an RX-7 around for a couple of weeks as a loan car when Supergrams was having some tweaking done on its ECU. And that was the loan car from Haltech, which I thought was amazing. Yeah, you loved it, didn't you? It was just such a cool experience. It wasn't particularly fast, especially getting back in a, you know, 280 kilowatt thing. Yeah. Um, it wasn't particularly fast, but 
it was an experience. And that's what driving's about. It Have an experience. Be, you can get a good experience. The quality of the experience. Go drive a 1.3 litre Micra. Enjoy that experience. The micras are mad. Yeah. Hey, Martin, that's cool. Let's talk about autonomous vehicles because I want to hear about this craziness in Singapore. Tell me everything. Um, so in Singapore, they are actually doing it as taxis. Doing what? Autonom like going to use autonomous vehicles as taxis. Right now. Yeah. There's a dude sitting in there who's like checking that you're not going to crash. Yes. So it's not like completely autonomous, but it's yeah, actually it's controlled autonomous, but there's like a backup plan. Oh, there's a dude. It's kind of like when you do like the driving and there's a guy in the passenger seat and he's got the pedal the so pedal. he can stomp on the thing. Exactly. Um, and I think Uber's thinking of doing something like that as well. Like they're, or maybe they already are, I don't know. But um, I think in Singapore by 2018, yep. It'll just be, which is not like far away at all. It's That's like 18 away months away or less. It'll actually just be going like you'll you'll press a doodle and the thing will go bing and your doodle goes ding and then a doodle turns up and you just get in and you autonomously go along. And, and we spoke about in another episode of Unicorn Circuit the insurance implications for having sex in autonomous vehicles, which is an interesting case. That so Singapore? I'm not sure if it will affect um, us. Oh, Singapore, that's a bad one because you're not allowed to have sex in a public place. In well, I mean, anywhere. Yeah. But Singapore's got a lot of quite strict laws about um, nudity and bubble gum and cigarettes and all sorts of crazy things. That's uh, true. Hence the, from my understanding, you're not allowed to be naked in your own house if you're near a window. Right. Uh, check with that uh, in Singapore. And so the um, autonomous vehicles are using an electric as well? Oh yeah, it's a, a right. Renault Zoe and a Miev and a uh, Mitsubishi. Is that called an Miev or is I, it just called I'm, a Miev? Miev. Miev. I think. A Mitsubishi and a Renault in Singapore. Cars are crazy expensive in Singapore because of the COE, the Certificate of Entitlement. Is it called? Yeah. Or something? Yep. Anyway, that's crazy. Uh, we did a whole story about that. In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna do something that we haven't done before, Martin. Yep. I'm actually gonna tell everyone this is a YouTube show, and I'm gonna tell them to look below and check the link for our documentary on the car scene in Singapore. Because if you're in any way into cars, culture, adventures, and learning about the planet, which you should, uh, then check out the link in the doodle below. Martin, let's talk towing cars. You're a big Tesla fan. You're a big electric car fan, aren't you? I am a big electric car fan. But the problem with them is, is they're not very good at towing things. Incorrect. What? Incorrect, because they're good at towing things, but not for long. That's true. Tesla Model X, which is meant to be like the fastest production SUV ever, um, has just been rated to tow 2.5 tonnes. Whoa! 2,500 kilograms. You know what? 2,500 <clears throat> kilograms is where towing capacity starts to get useful. Yeah. Because at one and a half tonnes, that's a 750 kilo box trailer that already weighs 400 kilos. You're already at a tonne. Correct. To put, like what everyone wants to do is yes. tow their race car behind their car which we do with our transit thing, which yes. is mad. Yep. So that's got, I think, a two or two and, two and a half, I'm pretty sure. Ford Transit and the Nissan 180, that's all anyone needs. Yeah, so that'll do two and a half tonnes, which means car trailer, which already weighs five to 700 kilos, depending on the quality of the trailer. Plus your car, that's 1.7, 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1.8. Exactly, and you're still under. And that matters, and you know what? A lot of those towing capacities are not so much about what the engine's capable of, it's yep. what both the brakes, stopping power, and what the chassis itself, because you gotta remember, like, when you hit the accelerator, that force is coming from an engine through bolts into the mounts all the way through that mounts, which is essentially sheet metal in yeah. most cars. There's not rails, vans and trucks, different story. So you've got to remember like there's, there's 1.6 millimeter sheet metal is pulling your three ton trailer. That's crazy. Yeah, and then I think back in the day there were some Holden Commodores where the whole back of the car would just fall off. Really? Yeah, like behind the wheel arches. Pretty much, did that. pretty much where your six by nines would be in your parcel tray, you just hit the gas in the hole, it just I had a tow ball on my Camaro. Did you? Yeah, I would like tow a little <laughs> box trailer and yeah. put my bikes in it and stuff. So Martin, let's move on to thank of the week. I don't know if I really thought about this properly, trying to like do thanking news and all of this at the same time. The biggest, the hardest. I don't know if this is possible. No, and the hardest step is the first one. Why don't we, I'm, you know what we're going to do? We're going to sort out the bits, like one bit. We're just going to assemble the back diff. Because by the yeah. way, this is a rear engine, rear wheel drive Sylvia, like legit. Well, front engine. No, this is rear engine. Ah. It says it's. It says on uh, the side. It should say RR, uh, uh, I think, shouldn't it? No, it actually says this is a front engine rear wheel drive layout. Oh, whoops. Well, an M, as some of these nerds will tell us, M06 chassis, which is a rear mounted motor rear wheel drive. I reckon they're, they're probably trying to tell us about the model of Sylvia, and not what's in the box. And this is, and to be fair, these kits are all the same underneath the shell. Oh, really? Yeah. Exactly. The same. So you can go get a mini cover and go donk, and it looks like a mini. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, it's a very good idea. Uh, let's hook into Thank of the Week. Of course, thanking is our um, delightful art of recontextualizing a product's name by taking a photo of it down near your crotch. Uh, the most authentic thank, of course, needs to happen in public, in a hardware store, or a pool shop, 
or maybe even your local market. Uh, Martin, let's just kick things straight up. Yeah. Let's, just, let's just get to it with the snatch block. <laughs> <laughs> now, is that when your mate gets in the way at the pub? Yeah, I guess it is. <laughs> 20,000 LB load tested. Um, anyway, that's a snatch block. Because I thought there was another term called a cock block. And that's a snatch block. I don't quite know what they mean. Oh, but maybe you know it's the op opposing gender. That's what I'm saying. Oh. I don't quite get it. Anyway, uh, let, let's just leave it there. No, great. Martin, um, the Furminator. Let's just get there. Now, what is the Furminator? Now, this is, um, it says, soap and glory uh, firming and toning formula. There it is, the Furminator. Now, this dude here, he, he works with his hands a bit. Look, look how he's got a very dirty fingernail, man. I don't know what he's been doing, but well done on, on doing what you do. Morning burst. Let's just get some oh, yes. facial cleanser. Let's get, get the job done, like straight up. Now, what's awesome? This guy's spanking with mates, and I'd say there's at least three mates there because there, there's there's him with his with oh, his yeah. pattern pants on, some other dude with a fawn-coloured pant, and another dude with a brown pant. Or maybe that's just two different. Oh, no, he's got leg tats. Oh, is that? Oh, it's a leg. Is that what it is? He's got oh, leg tats, man. Hairy leg. I thought it was a pant. It was so hairy. Anyway, morning burst. Um, the inflatable dick. Now that's a very, <laughs> that is a great use of using your thumb to finger one of the letters to make it look like it's something else, which is allowable. It is allowable. According to the official thanking rules that we developed ourselves. And Martin, last but definitely not least, let's, um, it could be one of the best thanks oh, ever. Oh, that's a big call. We've um, got a lot of good thanks. Um, it's a second hand product. Uh, it's oh, not does a that new count? item. Are you allowed uh, to do that? I think so, because the brand name is still visible. Right. And let's just go all out. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, possibly one of the best thanks I've ever seen. King Dick. King Dick. That's Dude, good. do you remember? Do you remember what the spanner in Lendis A Ride said when you went underground? What did it say? It said King Dick. Really? Do you remember the guy who lived underground? Yes. King Dick. King Dick is a King brand. King Dick. It's a brand and he found another one. Does King Dick still exist? If you do, please send us an email. And a spanner. To, and a spanner. What's our email address, Mark? Info at the unicorn circuit. Is it the unicorn circuit? It is. If you are from King Dick, please send us an email. We'd like to hear from you. We'd like to feature one of your spanners on the show. Um, that's amazing. That there is thanking. You can send in your own thanking photos to... Um, our Facebook page, which is flashing on here right now. I can't remember what it is, um, but it is the thanking. Um, it's flashing on there. Thank it's flashing there right now, plus there's a thing down in the doodle. There it is. It's time to move on to story time. Now, before we kick off into story time, I just want to say that I think I was overly optimistic to suggest that we could like build this while also trying to talk stories and do things because this like there's actually a lot of stuff to do. So we we're just going to build a diff instead. We're going to build a diff, which, which is, is topical for S13s right now. Totally isn't it, topical, it is. Um, because the diff in my 180, as you may know, is completely screwed. Um, so it's yeah. And building one of these might be easier than the what question, we have been doing. The question is also like. How many diffs has that car had? A lot, is the answer. Like, why does, like most cars have one diff in their entire existence, and that's it. Yes. But this car, no, 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 no. This car's had this car's multiple. Had now, Martin, I just got really hungry, and I know it's actually story time, but I also saw that down here we've got something that, this is, that's, that's a, this is a creamy coconut rich chocolate crunchy oh. quinoa bar. So I'm just going to eat this. We've still got our crazy food bag for the day. But Martin, for story time today, I want to talk about the shortest amount of time that you've ever owned a car. And I do believe it could be a car that you and I purchased together back in the day, which was a, uh, a Gemini station wagon. It was a Gemini station wagon. Is, is that the shortest? Yeah, it, it Can was. Can you tell us all about that it was, car, Martin, it was and about why a week. we ended up buying that in the first so place? So I was hoping to get a Gemini wagon because um, the price was right and uh, we'll come remember what episode we're going to do some kind of fun episode on it is it good or is it's it terrible amazing. is it good you would love it as well yeah um i can't remember what episode we're going to do on it but we ended up That's getting some incredible. other car instead actually incredible oh thank you Chase. i'm going to do a shout out to oh this. um wait is that healthy or is that just really bad for you i don't know it's incredible i'm doing a shout out to these people oh That's bloody amazing oh my lord if that is healthy that's a game changer um, it's anyway, probably a bit sugary, but anyway. 
Martin, so tell us about what went down. So he picked it up. Do you remember what happened? 1200 bucks? Something like that. I'm just freaking out by how good that is. Oh. Can you oh. send us some more? If you work at this company, if you work at the bar counter, or you know someone who does, it says made in Australia. Oh. Where are you? Have you got contact? Do you know someone? Spam their Facebook wall, everyone. Tell them to send us some stuff. Manufactured in Churchill oh. Grove in Hawthorne. You Melbourne people. That's amazing. Um, Please send us some more. So we went and picked it up for, I don't know, yeah, 1200 bucks or something like that. It looks pretty reasonable. It looked um, fine and it had been painted at some point in its life. And do you remember on the way home, do you remember what happened on the way home? We were driving back and there was like a, a four wheel drive, massive four wheel drive full of girls. Full of girls. And they're all yes. like, give us your number. And that's never happened to me ever. That's let right. Let alone in, like, you know, people buy cars specifically to try to like pick up girls. And they yeah. Do a specific kind of car and they're driving around, trying as much attention, beep at people and drive away, which never makes no, sense. Like, give to us me. your number and you put your window down and you're like, oh, oh, two, three. And then they saw you and just drove off. Don't be that guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, four, four, four young ladies did shout out to you. Yeah, they did. Because you're driving a crappy old Gemini station. Which I thought was true. hilarious. Like literally, I just just picked it up. Uh, anyway, and so yeah, got it home. I was like, this will be awesome. And then I started the close inspection mm. about what was actually going on with that car, and yep. it wasn't pretty. It was just so rusted, and it was that. Was coolant issues, wasn't there? Coolant issues too. So I overheated. Drove it to work. It overheated, of course, because it's a new car. That's what happens. Um, which has happened to you too. Oh yeah. Um, it overheated, sucked. which sucked, and um, yeah. How long did you have it? it less, was than less than seven week, days. Wasn't it? Less than seven days, and I sold it. And you know what? It sold really easily too. And funnily enough, Gemini's people really put the effort in these days if they're going to keep a Gemini. Yeah. Because it will, they will start to go up in value. Um, they're, they're old enough now that they'll start to appreciate in value. Uh, will yeah, it probably, someone, someone's probably fixed it. Right. Because with enough work, like that would have been a back to bare metal, weld in new panels, mm. that kind of restoration, which I just wasn't wasn't ready to do on that yep. particular car. It wasn't wasn't worth it. One week is short though. For One me, the shortest short. amount of time I've ever. I'm not talking borrowing cars. In like you buy it, put it in your name, like fully go to town on it. Um, that's awesome, man. Isn't it cool? So that's. Like it all lives inside here, and what is awesome about this is that is ABS plastic, yeah. And the three D printer prints in ABS. That's great. So really, the strength, like if Thank you blow, you. if you blow a diff, you just go and print a new diff. That's awesome. That's cool, huh? So we're just, I'm just dumping that little metal cog into this shell thing. It's awesome. Very detailed. I yeah, can see why people get really into this. I'm really keen to see their cars. Yeah. Um, yeah. Shortest amount of time I ever owned the car was a Jeep, Jeep soft top oh, yeah. Wrangler. Six weeks. Kept it over summer, and then um. Tried to wash its like jeepness off me, and uh, sold it six weeks later. To and buy I, the I, best I car. The ever. I bought the sizzle, not the sausage, mate. <laughs> Did you just anyway, make that up? No, I didn't. That's incredible. It's like an advertising thing where you sell the sausage, not the sil. No, you do the I don't know Bunnings. They they want you to hear the sizzle of the sausage, so then you buy the sausage. But it's the sizzle that gets. I saw I saw the best. This is not my joke, but I saw the best Mimi joke thing the other day. Yeah. And it was, um, it's like a it's a. It's a daughter asking, um, it's, a, it's a son asking his dad why her cousin's name is Diamond. And the dad says, oh, it's because, because your auntie really likes diamonds. <laughs> and, then, and then the kid and, and someone goes, but why they do that? And the dad goes, shut up, Bunning Sausage. <laughs> I didn't tell it that well. But shut did you get up, it? Bunning Sausage. Because <laughs> yeah. the parents don't call their kids what they love. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I had to explain it. I, no, I, no, I get it. it. I get it. I get it. Here's shut up, bunning sausage. I thought it meant that he had a bunning sausage and got like quite turned on by it and then oh. procreated in the bunnings car park and therefore named the kid after the place that that happened. And like more power to you if that's if that's the way you're gonna go about <laughs> that's like well. that's good on you. Uh, anyway. There it is. Yes. Um, diff. Well done, Martin. The little thing. And now we've got to oil it. So this is like putting your diff oil in. Yeah. Just... <laughs> Except we couldn't because as we know, ours was broken. Yes, does that um, too. That's awesome. We built a diff. Uh, all right, we are nearing the end of the show, but of course we cannot leave without diving deep into the hairy random eat bag. So here it is. Let's try some strange things. <laughs> spin that side oh, clockwise wow, and the other, the other side spins anti-clockwise. Look. 
That's awesome. It's doing what a diff does. That's so yeah, clever, eh? Crazy gear stuff. That's really clever. Now, Good Martin, to me, today, yeah. and I'd like to congratulate you for bringing in this because yes. I've never tried it. This is Vegemite Cheesy Bite. I would never buy that. It's a deliciously different Vegemite experience according to the logo. Now, Vegemite is like a salty, is it starch? Yeast? It's is yeast. It a, a yeast. It's a extract? yeast extract. So it's, it's a byproduct, basically. It's, it's like a very dark, thick black paste that everybody gets really surprised because, you know, they go to America and go, um, hey, here's some Vegemite. And they're like, oh, that's disgusting. That's a terrible American accent. Can you yeah. do a better one? No, no probably not. Not even going to try. Anyway, that, that was terrible. And they're like, whoa, what's, the, yo, Vegemite. Ve ve Vegemite, what would they say in American? Whoa, they eat weird stuff down in Australia called Vegemite. Vegemite. Yes. That's the worst. But anyway, before you hate on me, uh, let's hear your Australian accent. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Australia. Ah, uh, Australia. Anyway, so um, usually though, when Americans and other people try it, they just like dip a spoon in and just like have a whole spoon. It's, it's not meant no. to be eaten like that. No, it's not. Whereas this here is meant to be a milder version, I understand. Where did you buy this from, Martin? You can buy that from supermarkets. Just any supermarket? You can. And so what they've actually done is, you know how you can buy the, the the creamy cheese, like the, it's like plastic cheese, but it's like cream melted cheese, plastic yeah. cream cheese, but it's not proper cream cheese. Like it's, it's. In America, I think they have that on breakfast. Like they have like cream, they have, do you know what else they do in America? They have bacon and like maple sauce yeah. and cream cheese. I maple think. sauce. Is that what it's called? Maple syrup. We don't have that in Australia. Uh, anyway, so Martin, um, yes, I don't cream know what, cheese. I don't know what screws they are, man. What screws are they? Can you tell? Uh, no, I'm not even looking, man. I just the idea of building this on this just it was just it was I was that was silly of me to think so, and I'm sorry about that. No, Martin, cream good. cheese. Tell me all about it. Oh, so it's like like that kind of cheapy cream cheese stuff. It's it's basically just um, very much manufactured processed food. And is that what this is? No, it, well, yes, it's that mixed with Vegemite. So all they did oh, okay. was got cream cheese and Vegemite and put it in an industrial blender and went there. You go. What's frightening about that though is that if this has got cheese in it, it's not refrigerated. So no. I think cheese would be a loose term. Oh my god, dude. Cheese is a loose term. Story People have been making scroat cheese what? and toe cheese for sale to eat. No. They've been scraping. No, 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 no. Yes, no, 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 no. no. I'm, I don't want that to be right. I don't live in that Martin, world. Um, a woman is also currently trying to market her own cheese that she produced internally. Has produced. Um, it is a real thing, man. No, it it's a not. a real thing. It's not. Um, I was having lunch with a scientist yesterday, legit. Um, she was telling me all about it. Basically, what people do is they swab the bacteria off, like in between the, really? um, their toes, and then they grow that culture and turn it into cheese. So there's human cheese, uh, dick cheese, armpit cheese, like it's just really. And, and and people are making cheese from all sorts of weird things. Anyway, the disturbing thing about that, if this is cheese, why is it not refrigerated? This is cheesy mite, so this is this is obviously cheese mixed with Vegemite. Let's have a go. Oh, this is my favourite when I was a kid when this thing. Oh, popped that up. noise? Yeah, hold on. So good. And then Satisfying. afterwards, you know what I used to play with? Because I was riding goats and didn't have cars. My toy used to be a jar and I'd go. <laughs> I used to do that for hours. And if you press the edge, it makes a different sound. Doesn't it? No. No. Oh. Don't destroy my world. <laughs> anyway, this is it, Martin. Um, cheese. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's bad. Looks got little bubbles in it. A machine squirted that in through a massive... <laughs> Stainless steel, big dildo looking thing, like <laughs> went straight into that jar. That came out like that would be made by the ton. Oh, Martin, Martin. Look, I've made a diff. Okay, rinse. Martin, this is this is this is a bit loose today. Let's just let's go there and um, look at it. Look at it. It doesn't it doesn't oh, look it doesn't good, look does it? It looks like Nutella. Yeah, but it doesn't smell like it. It smells um. Well, cheers, Martin. Do you, I'll fist you for cheers and um. Martin, we forgot to do our weird stuff from the internet oh. today, so let's just not even go there. Let's just let's just leave it. Okay. Because I'm, I'm I don't think I'm going to be able to like concentrate after having this. You built a diff. That was some cheesy mite. Um, cheers, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know when milk's been sitting for a bit too long. Thanks. You know when milk's mil milk's been sitting for a bit too long and it gets that sort of Spicy, dairy. Look at that. Like that doesn't look like something you're meant to eat, does it? <laughs> does it? Like that doesn't look like something you're meant to put in your body. It looks the same on the way out <laughs> as it does on the way in. Martin, I think in the right context, um, that could be maybe on some nice hot look, crispy I mean, toast. 
I'm not going to be mining any more of it, is the short version, not Ooh. that I did. What I will say is... B vitamin. Um, you just got B vitamins. What I will say is that there's this other thing that we have in Australia called Promite. Yeah. Delicious. Really? Highly recommendable. Oh, I found it's the screws. Like, it's like a delicious thing of the thing. Is that it, Martin? Are we going to call it a day? Are we, Are we gonna, done for unicorn circuit? I think, yeah, but I think we need to build more of this, man. Yeah, no, let's let's build more of it, but let's not take the people through this because they've they've got other things to do, man. There's, there's... So so you mean we might see progress of the build later? I think so. Like next episode. Well, I've actually got to go fix my real diff on my real 180 properly. Next again. episode, you should you should show what you've built and your experience of building. All right, cool. We'll we'll, we'll do that. Thank you, of course, for watching the unicorn circuit. Um, you can stay up to date with us on our Facebook page, which is, um, I don't know what it is. I'm sorry. Do you know what it is, Martin? Our Facebook page? Yeah. Yeah, it's just the unicorn circuit, man. Facebook.com, is just it? Just punch the unicorn circuit into Facebook, into Google, whatever you want. It'll come right, up. We're going to make a car. Thank you for watching. Have an amazing Unbelievably, week. Um, the unicorn what? circuit does not exist otherwise. Okay, good. Why has right, no one thought of it? Thank you. Good times. Um, if you have a Jeep, drive safely and enjoy filling it up with petrol more often regularly than everyone else does. <laughs> See you guys.